Hi, honey. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. Nice to see you there. Good to see you. You have a McDonald's <laughs> coffee. Yeah, I just discovered them. I mean, I know, I know, whatever you're saying, but <laughs> it, it's actually pretty good. I got to tell you, this is a first. I have never seen I you. went to McCafe. <laughs> <laughs> and I just drove through, and hey, it's pretty good. I have never seen you with a McDonald's Well, you may coffee. never see one again, but I'm enjoying it in the moment, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, life is busy right now. That's an indication right there of hitting the drive through Yeah, but it was a, you know, a little treat. Didn't get to it this morning. Had a window of opportunity and, you know, All right. gave it a shot. Okay. Or a double shot, depending. <laughs> Nice. Friends, welcome to the Ransomed Heart Podcast. John and Stacy Eldridge here, this time with you here in May. Wanted to share some thoughts that we've been talking about at home in our kitchen. Kind of two things we wanted to bring together. As you know, I think if you've listened to these podcasts over time, you're familiar with a practice that we have. And the practice is around the beginning of the year, Sometimes exactly on New Year's Day, we will ask God for some words over the year personally. Each of us do this and just ask Jesus, what are you saying over the year? Do you have a theme? Do you have, yeah, just some guiding words for us over the year? And historically, it's been huge for us. His words have been not only incredibly accurate to what the year proved, but also a rescue. Yes. Like he knows what's coming and mm -hmm. he knows what our hearts need. And one year, you know, the word was love and forgive. And oh man, like it just turned out relationally to be a year that needed a lot of love and forgiveness. And having those words and returning to those words were absolutely huge, absolutely huge for us. So this year, we did that and wanted to share with you a piece of what Jesus spoke and talk about how that's playing out in our lives now as an encouragement for you to do the same. It's not too late right? <laughs> if you haven't done it. right? And if you did, maybe come back to some things that Jesus has spoken to you. So, Hunt, what was one of the things that Jesus said? Well, New Year's Day, I was asking him, is there a word that you have for me and for this year, just uh, kind of a, a canopy for me to live under? And I didn't hear anything. So asking, asking, pressing in, asking. And it literally wasn't until the end of the month of January, mm -hmm, four mm -hmm. weeks later, I was in a time of just worshiping him. And I heard the word intimacy, which made me so happy. Did it? Oh, my gosh. It made me so happy. I didn't hear strive. Embrace yourself. Right. Or, you know, <laughs> try harder. Hunker down. Yeah. Uh, fast or, you yeah. know. Bat in the hatches. Whatever. It could have been all kinds of things, but he knew and knows what my soul needs. And then mm. it was intimacy. It was like this promise, like, mm. like being met at the door with a bouquet of flowers that I didn't even know I was hungering after. And mm. just like, oh, yes, that's that's what I want. I want intimacy with Jesus. And I know that that is what feeds my soul, what nurtures me. And that's where every good thing of life flows out of my intimacy with Jesus. So for him to say that it's actually a year of that, oh, that's good news. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful and hopeful. It is. And then it's been good for me to remember it because... I have to cultivate that, you know, choose it. And it's kind of prodded me to do that when I haven't wanted to just to spend time alone with God or invite others to come in to, mm. to a time of just let's just worship him together for mm. a while. But him to go, no, no, this is this is your year for mm. intimacy. So mm. let's press into that together. Yeah, that's so good. And, and I here like we are it. in May. How's yeah. it going? I want more of it. Yes. I want more of it. It's like everything else that's good is opposed. Yeah. So personally, I am looking forward to to true downtime this summer yep. where I can 
it's not you know now I'm making it sound like it's up to me. My, the word is intimacy,、mm-hmm. but it's not all about me pursuing and pressing in and finding him. It's the offer stands. It's true. That's what he wants. And but you do have to make yourself available. I I have to make choices and make myself available. Yeah, which is different than striving. Yes, but we do have to make ourselves available for it. Yes,、yeah. and hearing that's my word that he wants it. It、mm. makes me so expectant and hopeful. Mm. Mm. That's so good. What about you, honey? What was the word that God gave you for the year? I actually had a very similar experience, and <laughs> friends, I know it's kind of funny to listen into our marriage a little bit that. We are actually kind of updating one another、right. <laughs> live while we're right. <laughs> what did what did you hear? Updating you,、um, which kind of gives you a sense of you know life can get demanding. Try as we may to keep that from happening, life gets demanding, and so one of the things that Jesus said to me, he simply spoke the word beauty,、mm. which was a first in the twenty plus years that I've. Been doing this whole practice. That was a first, and I was initially kind of a little thrown by it.、Uh-huh. Like, beauty? What do you mean by that? You know, and oh my goodness! Just this weekend, I know what he means by、yeah. that. I went down to visit some friends, as you know, down in the southwestern part of Colorado, down by the New Mexico border, and simply the drive,、mm. just the drive, like five and a half hours in the car, turned off the phone. Silence, and then the beauty of the drive. Yes. Oh my gosh! Like I forgot, I forgot beauty's power. I forgot beauty's power, and you know, spring comes a little late to Colorado, so the leaves are just coming out on the trees now, and and there's even snow still, you know, on the hills. But some of the wildflowers are beginning to peek out, and like the rivers、mm. and the mountains, and just. Beauty. It was so phenomenally healing to my soul, and I had a wonderful time down there with our friends, as you know. But it was worth the drive both ways, just for the beauty of it. I can hear the effect in your voice just as you describe it. Just it even、huge. that, but it was huge. Do you have any more words like with that healing, healing, healing?、Mm. Yeah, it just it soothes. And then it calms me down, yeah. And then it brings my soul into a place to receive. And then, like God is so in it, God is so in beauty. And then, like restoration, you know, it's not a surprise to most of our listeners to know that the war is costly, and if you live frequently at the front, as we do, the war is very costly. You know, you read Paul's life; it's just man, it's intense, and Jesus's life, and the early disciples and Christians right now living in other parts of the world understand very well the war is costly, and so the healing, like what was happening in the cars I was driving along, God bringing beauty. Like first, it was just soothing, and then it was calming, and then it like settled me into a place to receive. And a lot of what I was receiving from God through beauty was healing.、Mm. Like beauty heals,、yes. it, it does, and it's so restorative to the soul. And it also helps me to give a little bit more description to it. I'm kind of an adventure guy, you know. Not a big surprise to our listeners. And it was actually a turkey hunting trip. Right. <laughs> okay. So it was spring turkey hunting in Colorado, and. I also wanted to fish, and I wanted to explore, and I, you know, and what I tend to do with my free time is get active, right? Right. Fill it. Do. Do. But beauty is a different invitation.、Um, it's not so much doing as it is receiving. Yes. Yeah, it's a weird thing. <sighs> One of the most amazing things about beauty, which I think is connected to heaven, but I won't go off on this long tangent, is that. You can't really possess it. Like you don't possess beauty; you just、right. enjoy it. It's not about consuming.、Mm-hmm. It's not about binging. It's not about you know grasping, possessing, but more about gently receiving. And so, it's also you know have God speak that word 
it's going to be really reorienting to me this summer when the temptation is do a lot of projects, you know, fix this and that, you know, go on adventures. But now I have a reorienting word. Right. Because he's after the restoration of your soul. Exactly. I really love how our words go together, Mm -hmm. intimacy and beauty. Because part of the thing, honey, for that drive for you was how known you are by God. That there's a lot of places that are beautiful. But where he had you go was through a terrain that really matches the landscape of your soul, oh, of, totally. of your childhood, of right. who you are. So right. it was beautiful, but it was particular to you. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. Right. Exactly. It was the beauty that would minister to me. Yeah. And then in that, you know you're seen. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Seen by your father who knows you, who loves you, is for you, and knows that knows what you need. Mm. I want to use that thought, knows what you need, uh-huh. to kind of pause the conversation. Friends, we thought we'd do kind of a two-part episode here in, of podcasts. In the first part, we're talking about words that God can give us over a season in our lives. We like to ask them around the beginning of the year, over the year. But both of us actually had the same experience of not hearing right away. It took some time to hear. Not too late to do that. Not too late to ask God what he's saying for you. Or also just to ask them over a season. Like we have a coming summer. And Jesus, what are you saying over my summer? Yeah. Right? Really, really good to do that. And then we're kind of talking about how those words play out. And we interact with them and embrace them and choose to go with it or not. Yeah. Right? Choose to go with it. And want to turn a corner in the second part of the two-part episode here talking about you said God knows what you need. Mm -hmm. And as we're entering into our summer, which is a little quieter – oh, Jesus, may it be a little quieter than our ministry season, which is very intense – God knows what you need. God knows what we need. And so I want to come back next week and talk about what do you need? What do you need this summer with Jesus? And if you did miss our January podcast where Craig and I were talking about receiving words from God over the year and kind of how we go about that, how to pray into that, you can find that in the Ransom Heart podcast archives. Just go back into January And that might be helpful to you as well. You've been listening to the Ransomed Heart Podcast with John and Stacey Eldridge. I invite you to join us online at ransomedheart.com. And if you haven't yet discovered it, the Ransomed Heart app, free and super, super helpful. And among other things on the app are our podcasts. So it's another way to get it and get it on your phone and, you know, be able to listen to it on your commute or on your run or whatever it is you're doing. See you next week.